Hi everyone, I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of how to sign up for a Zoom account, um, particularly if you're teaching a music lesson. Um, so you want to go to zoom.us um, and then here on the top right hand corner you're going to click up sign up, it's free. Uh, so we're going to set up here for a basic free account. There are a lot of advantages to having a paid account, um, including you can have longer lessons, so the free accounts are limited to 40 minutes each. Um, but and various other things to do with um, where you can record the lesson. But for the moment, I'm going to show you the basic one. So here we go now, we're going to sign up. Um, here we are in, in my account here. Um, so we've got the name of the account, you've got the personal meeting ID. Now you've got your own meeting room, which is always the same number. That can be really helpful for if you're just giving out the same uh, me meeting link to all your students. Um, the only thing that could be then happening is that other students might interrupt others, others' lessons. Um, so you may want to be scheduling individual lesson meeting rooms for each student. It's, it's often a good idea that. But let's first, on the left hand side here, we have profile meetings, webinars, recordings, settings. Let's set your settings so that the lessons can happen as smoothly as possible. Uh, so first of all, you want to be having everybody's video on. Uh, you don't want them coming into the room and not being able to find how to get the picture. So just set that to, to blue so that uh, the video is always going to be on when they go in. You've then got the choice of telephone and computer audio. Now, to be honest, I keep it usually just on computer audio because what you can do is you can phone in, you see, uh, from, from a phone. But if you're doing a music lesson, you're going to need to see them anyway. Um, and some people get a bit confused um, which, which link they're clicking. Um, so probably safest if you've got, especially if you've got kids uh, joining you, just or in fact more to point, adults who, who aren't familiar with it, um, go to computer audio um, and select that. Uh, you can use uh, telephone and computer audio um, if you've got a device which has a good picture but rubbish sound, and another and then a phone which has decent sound. So what you'll be doing is using the, the audio on one device and the video on another. So you can do it that way. Um, but I'm suggesting for the moment just to try computer audio so you've all got it all coming through one device. Um, join before the host. What that means is that they can go into the room, they can check, they can be seen clearly, and uh, that's quite a useful thing. Um, the only problem there is if you have another meeting going on in another meeting room, uh, you can't have two meetings going on at the same time. So it's up to you to decide whether you want to let them join before you. You might say to them, only join five minutes before. That's what's worth it. It gives you a five minute break as well then in between your lessons, which is really good to rest your eyes and not get too much of a headache staring at your screen all day. Um, so there you go. You can either use your personal meeting ID. So that's the one I was talking about, about before where everybody gets the same meeting room. You can use that one and you would switch it on here if you wanted to do that. Um, and then if we scroll down a bit here, uh, requiring a password when you're scheduling the meetings, I wouldn't bother with that. These are people you know, I presume, um, who, who are coming for lessons. It's just an extra barrier, really, to people being able to join the meeting. So unless there's a really good reason for that, I wouldn't bother um, with, a, with, well, with the password thing at all. Um, now, when the student comes into the room, there's a ding-dong doorbell noise, which I quite like. Um, but here, you can mute that noise. Now, you would probably want to use that if you were using one meeting room for all your lessons and a student was coming in for the next lesson and didn't want to interrupt the flow of the student who was playing. So you could have that there with the blue on there to uh, get rid of the doorbell noise. But um, sometimes it's nice to be reminded somebody's entered the room, know who, who's in there. Um, although you would see them on the screen as well. Up and coming meeting reminders is really helpful. Um, it's nice to sit, see it popping up on your computer, uh, reminding you that the next lesson's about to start. Um, and if you go down here now, chat, this is helpful. This is your lesson notes. Um, so here for the chat, if you type everything in uh, at the end of the meeting, it will save it for you. So that's that's really helpful. Um, if To prevent the participants from saving the chat, I wouldn't bother with that because I presume your students would like to see the lesson notes. Up to you. Um, private chat is when you have more than one, more than two people in a room and you've got um, people wanting to send messages that the other person can't see. I wouldn't particularly have that on for um, safeguarding reasons. If you're teaching, you know, two pupils at the same time, or three, four, um, you want to sort of know what's going on really there, I think. Um, so auto-saving chats is handy as well, uh, so you don't have to remember to actually ask it to save. 
uh, playing sounds when the participants join or leave. Ding dong. Love it. Uh, you can have it just heard by you if you want, or you can have it heard by everybody. So if you didn't want it to interrupt the student, but you wanted to know they were in, you could have just heard by you. Um, so there we go. File transfer. That's helpful because if you want to send um, a file of anything, music, whatever, um, you can do that through there. So you click on that toggle there. Um, and if we just scroll down here, you don't really need any of these particularly. Um, screen sharing. Now, screen sharing is great because um, that is if you wanted to share something that's on your computer. So it could be a photo of something or um, as, again, some music or a website or whatever, whatever it is that you'd be sharing with your students. Um, you can do that. Now, um, they can also share with you as well. So um, I was teaching somebody from China the other day that was playing a Chinese piece I'd never heard of before, and they were able to share it with me and I could see the music. That was really helpful. Um, so we want to let all participants share or just you, depending on your situation. Um, and then if somebody else is sharing and you also want to share something at the same time, you can do, do that. But I wouldn't let everybody do it. It'll become chaotic. Um, there we go. We go down the whiteboard. That's for sort of drawing drawing something on the screen to show them. Although, honestly, I've tried drawing crotchets and quavers on with, with the cursor and it's really hard. <laughs> but um, you're welcome to do that. You can also set it to save if you want. You can set, save it for afterwards. So it's evidence. Um, remote control is you've been able to um, help them at, on their screen at their end. That can be a helpful thing to do as well. I wouldn't bother these advanced options except for the original sound option, which we mentioned in our um, meeting the other day. You need to be on a paid account to be able to have um, the original sound option. Now that's the sound where you get the, the proper sound that's been heard in the room. Uh, nothing has been compressed or altered uh, by Zoom. Zoom is, is, is primarily for voice meetings, uh, speaking rather than music. Um, and so it can make a bit of a weird sound. Sometimes it sounds like you're underwater a bit. Um, but you can switch orig the original sound option on in, a, in meeting advanced settings if you're in a professional account. You must wear headphones though if you've got original sound on. It won't work if you don't. Um, it will just completely overwhelm the system. It sounds crazy. Everything starts sounding like an alien. So you don't want to do that. There you go. So you've got your, your meeting settings set there. That's lovely. Let me go back here now to the left. And we can set up a meeting, a lesson. We'll call this a lesson. So we're going to schedule a new meeting here. So there we go. We're going to put the name of the meeting in. So Bob's lesson with Terry, whoever they are. Um, uh, I'm going to be, it's going to be um, some grade eight scales. Gosh, good luck, Bob. Um, and then you can either set, you set the date here. You set the date, you set the time, um, how long you want the lesson to be. Again, if it's a basic plan, it can only be 40 minutes. Um, it, it can go on as long as you like if it's um, if it's a professional plan. So you then put your time zone in. Now this may not be a big deal if you're all in the same country always that's fine. Uh, any of us who are teaching abroad really really important you put that time zone in there. Um, uh, it will automatically if, if it take the time zone of your browser but just check it yeah it's really important to do that. It can be a recurring meeting there so it could recur with no fixed time. So what this could be is all of Bob's lessons with Terry would be in this meeting room. It would always be the same ID. It would always have the same link. Um, and then wouldn't have to be scrabbling around trying to find a new link every time. So that can be really helpful that. Um, you could have it weekly. The lesson happens every week at the same time. There you go. And it occurs on so Monday, say for instance, and you could say when it ends or after how many weeks it ends. Um, there's lots of ways to fiddle with that. Just have a little play with it. Um, don't bother requiring the meeting password again because only that person is going to get that link and it's another barrier to be able to get into the room easily. There you go. In our settings we already set here didn't we that we've got the host and our participant have their video on. You've got the audio, the computer audio or you can do both. Um, and here meeting options. At the bottom we have record the meeting automatically on a local computer. So that's your computer, the host computer. The thing with this is after the lesson, there's, it sort of downloads it onto your computer and it's a file. Now, if you're teaching loads and loads of people, that's very good, quickly going to bung up your computer. So if you're on a basic account, 
what you might want to do is give the student permission to, uh, to have storage on their end. And so what they do is that they click a button in the meeting saying record and it will say the host needs to give you permission. And what you do then is in the meeting room, you go to manage participants, which is on the bottom of the Zoom window. Click on that and um, you find the student's name on the right hand side and you hover over the picture of the microphone and camera and it, it comes down a, a drop down box and you can click on there um, allow record it's something like that allow record um, and they click on that and then they can record it and then it will download onto their computer they can then watch the lesson back really helpful fantastic you then won't have a copy of it now if you do want to have a copy of it for safeguarding often this is really important um, you need to get um, a professional account 12 pounds a month it's not it's not that much it's, it's kind of worth it really and it gives you a terabyte of, of uh, recording space in their cloud and that means you can both access it and it's stored there and that's quite good from a you know teacher protection and student protection but also good practice idea isn't it you know they can watch it back afterwards and all the lesson notes are saved there as well um, so here I'm going to tick record it automatically on my local computer so I will have a copy and then I can then send it on to the student if I want so I hope that all made sense lots of options there and then you save that so there we go we've got our lesson there we've got several options now we can um, click on that which creates a little link uh, a calendar link which you click on it and it goes into your desktop calendar um, or Google Calendar or Yahoo Calendar we've also got the option here if we click on copy the invitation you can see here so this is uh, the lesson because we made it a recurring lesson it's got all the times it's recurring so that's probably a little bit of overkill on my part there um, but I can copy it there and then I paste that into an email and I send it and I can send it along with this link so if I click on that you'll see it's going to download there into my download box so I can then drag it into an email and send it to them um, I hope that's enough to get you started with. Um, I'm going to do another one on features inside the Zoom window, which will include that permission to record thing. Um, but I hope that's been helpful. Good luck, everybody.